The first strategy that I use is really trying to find purpose in my life. I, I think I've mentioned uh, on multiple occasions that I have a personal mission statement, and my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. When I left my job for the last time, my boss asked me, what are you going to do when you're not working? And I said, the work doesn't stop. And so I continue to find hobbies and find ways to give back to the community. I talk about the Master Gardener program and that I'm uh, becoming involved with, and that's a way for me to volunteer as a, as a, in the community to help people that maybe don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables to help them grow their own. I talk about substitute teaching, but again, having that personal mission statement really cemented for me what my purpose is, and so everything I do ties to that. Uh, number two, I try to stay active socially. I try to continue to uh, interact with my friends, and and even though our eras have changed in life and I may be doing stuff a little bit different than what they're doing, they're still, we're still friends and we still have things in common and we focus on those things that we have in common. And I talk to most of my friends about once or twice a week. And, and that was the same clip that I talked to when I was working. We just may talk about different stuff because I find other things that keep me busy. But by staying active socially, I still continue to be relevant. I still continue to have those important adult conversations that many of us feel like we lack. And it keeps me connected uh, to the world around me. Uh, number three, I try my best to maintain a routine. Now, the difference between a routine in retirement and a routine when I was working are completely different because at work, I had to get up at a certain time and I had to do things. But now my routine is let me make sure I the things that I want to do, I don't procrastinate on. I go out and do those. If I want to uh, film a YouTube video, then I film a YouTube video. And here's what that day is going to look like so I have time for it. And, and what I find is... I don't have time to be depressed because I'm so busy during the week and even on the weekends doing the things that need to get done. I was in a conversation with a good friend of mine yesterday and he's an entrepreneur. And so everything that he does, he's either making money for or he's finding value in. And so I, I told him that retirement is no different in some regards than being an entrepreneur, except the difference is, is you're the CEO of your own life. And so the things that I do bring value to me. They make me feel good and they help me feel fulfilled. Um, and I'm not out trying to make money, but it's, it's, it's the same, but different. And so I think, um, you know, having that routine and having things that keep you connected, uh, really help you overcome the idea of feeling like you're falling off, which I think again, leads to that depression. Um, the next one is pursuing lifelong learning. There's a lot of things that I think I know, there's a lot of things that I don't know, and there's a lot of things that I don't know that I don't know. And I, I think in an earlier episode, I talked about how I stepped outside of my comfort zone to do some things that I'd never done before. Some of the stuff I knew a little bit about, some of the stuff I have nothing about. Some of the stuff I go into thinking I know how to a little bit about it and then find that I don't know anything. The Master Gardener stuff, there's a lot that I don't know about the Master Gardener, uh, about gardening. Uh, the music, there's a lot that I didn't understand about music. Building different relationships, there's a lot that I didn't understand in terms of how I was impacting other people with the way I communicated. So these are all things that as I continue to grow, I become a better person. I become a more well-rounded individual. And I, I, I now feel like I can add more value to people than I did when I initially retired. Um, number five. I regularly try to get out and exercise, and I don't feel like I have to go to the gym to get that hour in just to exercise. I exercise on one day a week. I usually go golfing. Another day of the week, I go walking with a good buddy of mine. Another day of the week, I might go and ride my exercise bike or lift some weights or do yoga or do some Pilates. Um, there's a whole host of things that I do, and, and at the end of the day, all I'm really focused on is am I getting some exercise today? Because sitting on the couch, and they say studies show that sitting on the couch and doing nothing, it then disconnects you to fo from folks. And, and what you start to see here is a lot of these things are all connected to each other. And so if you're, if you're not socially interacting and you're sitting on the couch, then your health gets out of whack. And then your whole life is around doctor's appointments and things like that. Not because of things that have happened out of the natural course, but because you're sitting. Well, guess what? That's going to become depressing because there's nothing more depressing than having a problem that happened because of something that you did or that you didn't do. So these are, these are all connected.
Um, the other thing I do is I set goals for myself. There are things that I want to do. So as an example, I talk about how I wanted to start playing the piano. Well, one of the goals that I have for myself is that when my wife's birthday comes, I want to be able to play her a song and sad that song sound like a song and sound like music. And this is coming from a person that besides playing clarinet in third grade, I never played an instrument before. So this is an opportunity for me to do something for her. The other thing is, is I want to make sure one of the goals I have is to make sure that my wife and I have specific time that we spend time together every week where we just kind of sit and do nothing, whether it's watching YouTube videos, whether it's going to the casino, whatever it is. And I, I want to spend time. I have goals when it comes to playing golf. I have, I just, but my, my point being is that I've always been a goal setter. I've always worked towards something. And so just because I'm not working, it doesn't mean that I stop working towards something. I'm not working towards in a performance evaluation. I'm not working towards making my boss happy. I'm not working towards organizational objectives. I'm working towards the objectives of my household. I'm, I'm working towards the objectives of my own psyche, of my, my friends, of the things that are fulfilling me. And I'm, my goals are around filling my cup. And so it doesn't change, but the moment you stop setting goals, if you're inclined to do that, then you start getting to what the anonymous user mentioned. You start to feel like you don't, there's no end, there's nothing else, there's, there's, there's no end in mind, and you start to feel unproductive. And as human beings, we have a natural need to feel productive in one way or another. Um, the next thing I do is I really try to manage my mental health. Now, I know all of you out here in the YouTube universe say, you know, this Sabado guy is always going, always happy, always slamming and jamming. But the fact is, is there are times when I think about things that I don't feel good about. There are times when I go back and think about experiences I had that if I knew then what I knew now that I would have done different. And do those things upset me? Absolutely. But the difference is, is I don't just let those things come in and take over my being. I acknowledge that they're there. And I take a look and say, how do I get myself outside of that thinking process. And so, you know, one of the exercises that I use is that when I start getting negative thoughts that I can't, of things that I can't control, I start looking and identifying things in the real world that are in front of me. So that way it changes my mind. Because what I find is if I think about it, then I'll continue to think about it. Then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then it takes over my mind. And, and I think the way the mind works is that once you start getting a range of emotions, then it can hijack your mind. And so if I'm thinking about something that makes me upset right now, for example, then I might say iPad, or I might say black cable, or I might say gray wall, or I might say, you know, whatever it is, just so that way my mind starts to think about that thing. And eventually that negative thing goes, but I couldn't do that unless I made myself aware that this negative feeling was happening. And Unfortunately, I think a lot of us get so used to doing things to get over those negative thoughts that then those things we do to get over it cause a problem. So a lot of people that have issues, let's say, of drinking or people that have, you know, whatever the, whatever the addiction is or, or whatever the issue is, a lot of times when you go back and you peel it to its lowest common denominator, it comes back to something that made it, that just didn't make us feel good emotionally. And so I always try to make sure that I identify what is that thing that's making me feel the way that I feel. And as a man, a lot of times I don't want to express my emotions because as men uh, in our society, we feel vulnerable and we don't want to feel vulnerable. We always want to give strength. But what you start to realize is when you're retired, there's no value in trying to be strong for everybody. Your value is living the best life that you could live so that way you can help the next person and the other person looks at how you're living and gets a little bit of hope and says, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to retire and I'll feel good and I won't have the stress. It'll be peaceful for me. But if I'm still dealing with a bunch of mental demons and not addressing those, then that's not just doing me a disservice, but that's doing a disservice for anybody that might aspire to get to where it is that that I am. And uh, so... Uh, the, the number eight um, is volunteering or working part time. Just because you stop working full time for your regular employer that you've been working for forever doesn't mean you can't do something small. 
Now, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes you could go into a different environment and realize that that different environment has a different set of issues. So I'll give you an example. I have a friend of mine who has a pension, but in order he retired, and what he realized is that in order to get a different pension that he had, he had to go and do some work for the laborers' union. And he says, you know, I was a laborer 30 years ago. I could be a laborer now. It's not a big deal. Well, then he went to become a laborer and realized that the life of folks that were that he worked with as a laborer back then and people that are laborers today, they've taken uh, drastically different paths. And their lives are structured a little bit different in terms of the decisions that they've made. Uh, I think he's about 60 years old. And so when you look at a 60-year-old laborer, you look at a 50-year-old laborer, their life is going to be different than somebody who maybe was a senior leader at a large organization, uh, which he was. And so it's a double-edged sword because sometimes uh, we, that w- we can get exposed to things that are outside of the realities that we have. And we just got to be ready for what it is that we, that we get. But you could go out and find um, part-time work that's something that aligns with what you want to do. So one of the things that I've thought about as an example is going and getting a job at a, at a nursery. So then I could talk to people about gardening. And once I finish this master gardener curriculum, I have a little bit of knowledge and be able to add knowledge to people that come into the garden uh, shop. I think I've mentioned before that I looked at doing some substitute teaching. And so there's a difference between doing a job because it has to be your bread and butter and doing a job because it's something that you enjoy or because it fits your mission or because it's something that you have always wanted to do. And so then I would suggest, because I know most of us that are watching this video are still working, start thinking about what it is that you would do when you when you do stop working. What are some of the things that um, you would you would you would be interested in, in trying? And then when you retire, that's your opportunity to do it. There's as they say, there's no time like the present. Well, there's no time like being retired to do stuff that you that you've always wanted to do. Uh, number nine. I, I really try to uh, to cultivate gratitude. It's easy for me to focus on the things that haven't gone right in my life. It's easy for me to get frustrated about things that happen. But, you know, the reality is, is I'm a 51-year-old black man in America, one of the most disenfranchised groups in our country, and I'm retired. I don't go into work and I don't answer to anybody. And so when I get angry, I always ask myself, how can I get angry at that? Somebody cuts me off on the freeway because the the reality is, is their prob the 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 urgency for them to get to where they're going is likely more than the urgency of anything else I have going on. When I go to the grocery store and somebody bangs their cart into mine, it's easy for me to get angry and say, "Oh, you banged your cart into mine," and I get all mad and cuss this person out. But the reality is, is you never know what the person's been through. You know, it's like Eminem said in 8 Mile in his freestyle. He says, he says, you don't know nothing about me, do you? You don't know nothing. You don't have no idea what I've been through. And the thing is, you don't know what people are dealing with. And so the fact that the biggest frustration in my life might be somebody cutting me off on the freeway, or if the biggest frustration in my life is that somebody might have bumped their cart in the mines in the, in the store, or the biggest thing in my life is somebody made a rude comment because of something that didn't even involve me, then that means my life is pretty good. Because I always tell people that there are people right now that are standing in the desert waiting for a C-230 to drop United Nations rations in the desert so they could feed their family. You know what? I'm not in that situation. And the likelihood of me being in that situation is very small. And for that, I'm always I'm always happy about it. So, you know, I really, but but when I think about life from that lens, it helps me feel better about everything else. Now, you can't diminish the challenges that people have. And I don't, by no means, do I diminish any of your challenges. Do I diminish the challenges that I have? But when I, when I look at it for, for what it is, is it really that bad? Is the situation that bad? Or are there causes and conditions that are making me think that it's that bad? And I, I suggest we could all perhaps uh, use some of that thinking in our own lives because Regardless of the situation or how good or bad we think it is, ask yourself, how's it impacting your life? How's it going to impact your life tomorrow? Is this worth me taking time out of my life to deal with in this way? Or do I just move on and realize that 
Sometimes there's going to be knuckleheads out there and knuckleheads are going to do stuff that I don't like and I just keep moving on because I'm not a knucklehead. And then the, the last one is thing I do is I, I really invest in my relationships. I, I went from a place in my life where it's, I, I've moved from, from quantity to quality. And I, and I think I've mentioned to you and, and some of my other videos about how I would spend a lot of time with a lot of folks and I'd get frustrated because folks would do things that, that didn't align with me and were on different frequencies, but I only had certain times to hang with them. But now the only people I spend time with are people that are filling my cup. You know, I was talking to my best friend today and it was funny because I was telling my best friend about an interaction that I had with another friend of mine and that interaction with the other friend of mine filled my cup. And I talked to my buddy yesterday about how certain interactions I had with other people were filling my cup. At the same time, he was filling my cup and I was filling his. And so, you know, when you go, when you get into that life of, of cup filling and you really invest in the right relationships, then life is good. You know, and I, I talked to my wife and, and we, uh, we're just, I, I was looking at TikTok and, I, and again, I hate to use these things because I know the source of truth is never TikTok or is never social media unless you're watching this channel. Just kidding. But it talked about Sagittarius and my wife is a Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius and they say two Sagittarius together are soulmates. And I'm like, you know, it's funny because I, I look at our relationship and how much we jive on, on different things. So. But, you know, I, I kind of say that in jest, but it is true that we do jive on, on most things and we're on, we've are on we been on the same page since we've been together. Uh, but it's, and, and I realize how uncommon that is, but it's because of that investment. It doesn't mean you don't have to put work into it. it doesn't mean you take, don't take time, but it's, you, you spend the time, you build a relationship and the next thing you know, the relationship starts to grow in a way that you, that you feel good. Well, think about it if your life is such that the only people you're around are people that are filling your cup. And when you're retired, you start to, you know, it's, it's easy to get depressed when you have people that are just taking, taking, taking and never give or people that you don't feel good about. So focus on that. And I, I, I think it would be who of you not to start processing that piece of information now and really start creating that, that life for yourself now, because then once you get to retirement, you're already there you started some of the planning. You know, I think I've mentioned in some other videos how there's been nine years, eight, nine years of planning that my wife and I did before we retired. Well, some of the planning was moving to the right place, dealing with some of the right people, getting some of the right jobs, doing and, and a bunch of, and, and of course, things that had to do with our retirement accounts and things like that. But, you know, you might, you might be able to take a look at that. So, you know, so that's about all I had for today. Um, Again, just to recap on the 10 is, is number one, uh, finding new purpose or finding a purpose. And, and I do that with my personal mission statement, uplifting the human condition any way that I can. Uh, staying socially active. Just because you're retired doesn't mean you have to lose your friends and, and continue to communicate because that helps you stay relevant. And the more relevant you feel, the better you feel. And that, that has a, I think that can have a tendency to alleviate depression. At least it w works for me. Uh, maintaining a routine. Having something to do, having a sense of purpose, you know, really is, you know, having a routine, knowing what you're going to do. So then you don't feel like, you know, there's no tomorrow or, or there's there's no hope for the future. Uh, pursuing lifelong learning. You know, even though we even though we're retired, doesn't mean you stop learning stuff. You just learn different stuff and you have more capacity to pick stuff up. So it may not even take you as long to learn new things because you have the capacity and the time. And it's not all going to school and taking tests and things like that. It could be in your social circles. It could be with your hobbies. It could be with a whole bunch of different things. Uh, exercise regularly. There is a direct correlation between a person's mental health and a person's physical health. So when you retire, it releases endorphins, and those endorphins help you feel better. And so even at the most basic level, regularly exercising is really going to help uh, do uh, help improve your, your mental health. Um, setting goals. For those of us, sometimes people get uh, get depressed because they don't feel like there's anything in the future. It's like, well, this is it. But if you set goals, then you have milestones that you're meeting. And when you meet those milestones, those milestones help you feel good. You feel good when you accomplish something. It doesn't have to, you don't have to build Rome, but you could do something small. And um, there's small things like today. If you know, you probably noticed the lighting in the back. And so my wife had mentioned that one of the lights was off and didn't seem to fit the 
uh, the motif of what we're trying to do or the ambiance. And so what I did is I changed the lights and got the lights all set up. So now that was a little goal. It wasn't a lot. And every day there's one thing that I'll do. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Most of the time it's not. Um, monitoring your, your, your mental health. It's easy for us when, when we start to go down a rabbit hole and we start to not feel good, it's easy for us to continue down that rabbit hole because that even though it doesn't feel good, it's comfortable that we're going down that rabbit hole because it's something that's inside of our mind. But we don't step back and identify to ourselves that we're not feeling good. And so I think the idea would be just identify and try to figure out why do I feel this way? And sometimes there's no answer. Sometimes you just feel that. Sometimes we're just moody. I know for me, sometimes I'm just moody. Am I mad at somebody? Did something happen? No, I just don't feel like talking. So, but identify that. So that way, if there is something going on, you can address that early and not impact everybody else around you and and not put yourself in a place where you're depressed because, again, you, you feel loneliness and, and isolation. Um you know, number eight is volunteering. You could volunteer uh, for an organization. You could find a, a, a something that you're passionate about. You can go and work part time at something that you've always been interested in doing, but you didn't think you're going to make enough money doing it full time. But now you won't have the you won't have to worry about that because you've got your basics covered. Now you're just filling your cup. Uh, number nine, cultivating gratitude. No matter how bad we have it, somebody else always has it worse. And again, there's no competition for hardship. And I, I know that's where a lot of people are going to go. So if you if you feel that way, you could go down in the end of the comments. But for no matter what's going on with anybody, somebody's always got it more difficult than you do. And I think when we realize that and put into perspective our hardships and realize that there are positive things that are going on in our lives, the better off we feel and, it, and the, the less likelihood we have to go down those rabbit holes. And then the last one, again, is is investing in your relationships. It's there's, there's people around you for all of you. There are people around you that care about you. And if you don't feel that way, I care about you. And I care about you. The way I demonstrate that is giving you content every week. The way I demonstrate that is I respond to all the comments. The way that I demonstrate that is by offering myself as a resource to you if you have questions. And if you have questions, I try to write content on those questions. So if nothing else, you have a friend in me. And, you know, always remember that it's never my expectation that we all retire, that you retire early because I know it's not realistic for some people. And I know some people it's, it's a little bit further out. I think we all retire at some time because there's always a point where you can't work. But it's not about retiring early. But my expectation is that each of you uh, live your best life. And I think if you focus on living your best life, doing the things that fill your cup, making yourself happy finding the type of job that's going to work for you long term and that you feel good about doing and having a sense of purpose and how you live your life and being intentional about that. That's really all we can ask for. And if we happen to retire and not have to go to work every day, that's great. But if you do get to that point, I don't want you to be depressed. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, you know, consider subscribing, hit, a, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, please, um, you know, leave them in the comments. I respond to all of the comments, and if you have a question, uh, you know, leave that in the comments, and I'll I'll respond either directly to the question or I'll put some content around that. But if I if I do, um, you know, that that's great. So, on that note, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.